good morning. Let's begin by starting the finest of the day. Learning from the industry's top experts. In this two-hour session, we'll hear from the professionals who have achieved success in their fields. We'll interact with them, learn from their life experiences, challenges they have overcome, and success they have attained. I'm sure this will leave a spark in many of you and which will eventually illuminate the society in no time. Here we have with us the experts of us, experts from our industry, Dr. U. Jogi Anandwarma and Dr. Manoj M. Sharma. Now, I would like to take you through their achievements and strength. Our first expert of the session, Dr. U. Jogi Anandwarma, is an eminent social entrepreneur and a renowned industrialist and currently the Vice President of Ananda Group of Companies, which is India's largest integrated agri-aqua company and is a major producer and exporter of processed fishery products. Dr. Jogi is a dentist by profession, also served as a member of the Marine Product Export Authority of India, and has been a member of the Aqua Task Force in Andhra Pradesh since 2016. On behalf of the organizing committee, I welcome Dr. U. Jogi Anand Verma for the day. Moving forward, I would like to introduce Dr. Manoj M. Sharma, a pioneer shrimp farming professional with more than 26 years of experience in sustainable shrimp farming. He is the first to start the concept of satellite shrimp farming with complete traceability protocol in Gujarat to get the final products from shrimp farmers. He is the founder and managing director of Mayank Aquaculture Private Limited, which produces 500 ton shrimp per annum with international repute. Furthermore, he has been honored with many awards and recognition, mentioning a few National Award 2018 from National Fisheries Development Board for his sustainable shrimp farming model in Gujarat. Also, he is a recipient of AgriVision Award 2020 from Akhila Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad. On behalf of the organizing committee, I welcome Dr. Manoj M. Sharma to the session. Furthermore, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the, all the faculty members and students who have assembled here from Kerala University of Fisheries and Ocean Studies. So without much delay, let's start our first session inviting Dr. U. Jogi Anand Verma to share his thoughts and interact with our students. Over to you, sir. Morning to one and all. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Yogi Anand Verma, and from Ananda Group, I'm basically from Andhra. I think I mean most of the people here are from Fisheries College, so I've been to your college a couple of times earlier when I was 22 years ago. That was long back, and uh, our journey, uh, Ananda Group, has started. Uh, as an agribusiness company, I think, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a brief. You don't need to go to the next slide. So what we have done here in Ananda Group is, I mean, uh, we have shifted from agriculture business into aquaculture business. So today, if you look at the history, what is happening in the modern world, there's a, there's a food crisis that is going to come up. Why? Everybody has to understand that population is growing. With the present situation where the population is around, say, in 20, 
2022, the new strategy says that it's 22 billion, uh, 8 billion. And then by 2050, it's going to be going up to 9.8 billion. So what happens when the population goes up? Everybody is in need of food. So food crisis is what is going to be envisaged in the near future. What do you need to stop this food crisis? I mean, in the present world, everybody knows that close to 820 million people are chronically ill because of malnutrition. How do you substantiate food for the next generations to come in? Then comes aquaculture. So the next slide is the importance of aquaculture where everybody knows that there's food crisis that's going to come up in the future. How does aquaculture play a role when it comes to food crisis? So aquaculture is like, I mean, uh, it's a global contribution with sustainable growth and food, I mean, which is going to be serving for the human mankind. So everybody here is a fisheries background. Everybody looks for a job here in fisheries or aquaculture. So the importance here is the industry has a low carbon foot footprint. And then in the present situation, close to say 55 million people are employed directly through aquaculture and fisheries sector. It's a huge. Of that, say 60% is where women employment is done in this sector. So I think, I mean, I'll, uh, when uh, Andhra Pradesh ranks number one in India in aquaculture, it's like, I mean, aquaculture is diversified into two sectors. One is inland, one is offshore marine, and this. In Andhra, where aquaculture is more into production-based thing rather than fisheries. So in uh, Andhra, it's number one in India where shrimp is produced and exported to US, Europe, Japan, and Middle East countries. So India, I mean, Andhra Pradesh ranks number one. The place where we, I come from is called Bhimavaram. Bhimavaram is known because it is considered as the aquaculture capital of India. Why? Because it's the largest producer of shrimp in India. It's also the largest producer of fish in India. So when you compare to Kerala, where people who try to, I mean, uh, graduate and then come back, there, there are a lot of options that pick up. So I, I just want to keep going, keep going. So, so Ananda started their business back in the 1930s with rice mill and then agri-based industry. And then we changed this scenario. Rice was a major crop. It was considered the rice bowl of India, Andhra. And then we started off aquaculture business in the 80s, early 80s. And then, uh, next one. What happened here is like, I mean, Ananda Group, we started using the unfit lands of agri agriculture, wherein the diversification has happened from agriculture to aquaculture. So the key here is like, everybody produces paddy, agriculture. They had a lot of issues when they were doing farming business because one crop in out of three crops used to fail because of weather conditions. Or there were some issues in marketing. Next one. The unfit lands, most of them were converted from agriculture to aquaculture. The Indian major calves were the major focus species in farming when it comes to uh, the whole India. So Indian major calves being Rohu, Katla, and Mrigal. So these are the three species that were only cultured where close to 1.5 million tons of fish is produced and close to 800 tons of 800,000, I mean 8 lakh tons of shrimp is produced in India. And this 8 lakh tons of shrimp is being exported worldwide. Next one. What happens in the early uh, uh, when uh, seafood was produced, when shrimp farming was done, there were very less significant uh, processing plants, be it in Kerala or be it in Andhra, because Kerala was the leader in aquaculture back in the 80s and 90s. Later, the, there's a shift when aquaculture started in Andhra. We started processing plants, and then uh, we have diversified and uh, integrated the whole ecosystem right from hatcheries into export. A few of the companies, you can skip this. The companies that we do here is like, I mean, uh, we have a, I mean, so many companies where everybody has their own interest, be it in hatchery part or be it in uh, manufacturing part or be it in processing or be it in biotech or whatever it is. I mean, there are so many verticals in aquaculture you can choose. And uh, uh, 
we, yeah. I mean, the first hatchery, uh, first Scampi was started uh, by a company in the 1990, uh, India's first hatchery for Scampi. And then uh, of late, uh, we have been approved as uh, the one and only organic black tiger hatchery in India till date. And we do that, we have two facilities, one in uh, uh, Andhra and one in West Bengal. These two are organically certified by EU body. And uh, we also have uh, Vename hatchery where we have a production capacity of close to 2 billion seedlings. And uh, we have a feed plant where uh, we manufacture feed as an integration, like I said, I mean, it's part of a project where we do the feed manufacturing. And uh, we have uh, feed for shrimp and we even produce feed for fish. And uh, the processing plants, when we started off back in the 19, uh, 90, uh, we had uh, problems marketing uh, and taking the produce which are farm raised uh, in Andhra. We used to take it from Bhimavaram where we were doing the farming and then we used to take it to Vizag where there was a couple of factories and those factories were also apparently run by Keralite and Tamilian people. So off late they are not in business anymore. I am sorry to say that but they are the guys where it all started from. I think I mean you'll have to take that whatever goes has to come back. So I think, I mean, Kerala has a good chance here to come back. And uh, uh, the uh, integration where Ananda is focused on has got into manufacturing of uh, probiotics and even into uh, lab testing, where we have set up a uh, modern lab, which is state of the art, which has NABL certification also. And uh, we even started the first uh, uh, BMC project, which is Broodstock Multiplication Center. So this is like, I mean, uh, you uh, make the uh, parents from the seedling. And then so far in India, uh, India is completely dependent on US to bring in the brood stock. So we have taken up that project. Uh, it is live right now. And we are still working to get this much more successful. And uh, uh, the new generation where people have started working was parks. So Ananda has two food parks, one for agri-produce, where we do uh, only fruit and vegetable, and the other one is uh, uh, for aqua. This is the first aqua food park in India. So uh, you have separate lines uh, where you can do uh, all varieties of fish and shrimp as a separate dedicated lines uh, where you, have, you can do raw or you can do cooked or you can do breaded and value-added products also. And uh, these are some of the brands that we export from India to the US. And, uh, the domestic brands that we do here, just to have an idea, I mean, just to give you a broader picture, right? I mean, you guys are going to graduate and then you should see that, I mean, this is what is coming up. The brands here are from Tata, okay? Big Basket, everybody knows that this is a Tata brand. So NutriFish is our own brand, okay? And uh, uh, as a company, we have a corporate social responsibility where we even have a blood bank. We started off in 2010. Company has, uh, I mean, uh, where we all export from India from Bhimavaram to across 28 countries across the world and uh, coming back to education right so this is where everybody is looking at so everybody has so many choices to pick but you have to be very strong and you got to make the right choice what's the right choice you'll have to know your strength you'll have to make a good decision and that's how you can move forward so Once you graduate, right, what are all the opportunities once you pass out of school? So you, you, you have uh, four verticals where you have on-farm jobs, and then you have academic jobs, you have government jobs, or you even be an entrepreneur on, or on your own, where you can do it your own startup. So I think, I mean, uh, this, is, this is like to look and get into a government job. So that's the focus right after education, I mean, right from college. You want to make sure that you get into a government job. It's, it's always very few opportunities that we have when it comes to government jobs. It's always, I mean, I think the main uh, chief guest of the day, he has always said this. It's always easier to take risk, right? Only when you become an employer, you're taking risk and then you create employment on your own. There's nothing wrong in taking risk. So I think uh, the opportunities that we have here after you graduate is you can be a self-employed person or you, you can be an entrepreneur or you can do your own startup. So, I mean, just want to give you a brief that there are a couple of uh, companies like Hatch. Uh, Hatch is a startup where if you have your thoughts, they're here to 
invest in your thought and take that project forward. Uh, there's, there's a company called Equaspark. They are also a Netherlands-based company. These are also very familiar companies where uh, they are based out of Singapore, and they even do uh, funding for ideas of all the uh, new generation thought process. Okay, and uh, I think I mean everybody knows that the degree is always helpful, but the skills are equally important. So I think I mean uh, what you have to understand here is the education system in large perspective. The, in China, which accounts for 60% of the world aquaculture production, fisheries education is farm and industry centered. In Thailand, 85% of fisheries graduates prefer self-employment in aquaculture. However, self-employment fisheries graduates in India are needed for the newer generation. There has to be a shift in the total exposure system. It has to be industry specific. Everybody is looking at education, trying to get a degree. But I mean, like I presented here, everybody can see that. I mean, what is happening in our neighboring countries like China or Thailand or Indonesia, which are also shrimp producing countries or fish producing countries. So I think, I mean, uh, this is where we'll have to focus. And uh, the shift has to be in such a way that it has to be linked with the industry. University and industry linkages are the key for any successful model proof that's the advantage of a university where you can change the curriculum it gives you a better employment opportunity for the students and the industry research is going to be based on requirement of the sector so that's what the university can bring in what can the industry do here it's got it's got the financial muscle to invest and then create what is needed for the future it will take up the well-trained human resources. Whoever is a graduate, you'll always find a job in the private sector rather than a government sector. I think, I mean, the, the new shift from government here is they're trying to make it more of private rather than government. They're trying to split off or let go the government companies. And uh, I think, I mean, uh, Everybody knows, I mean, uh, hard work is the key, right? So how do you take this with hard work? Hard work just alone has to have Upgrading, you got to upgrade yourself and take it to the next level. I mean, you got to keep learning, and it's never ending process. You have to keep learning, learning. So, what happens with the skills that you need is what are the what are all needed for your skills? So, the, I mean, you got to know your strengths, which are technical, which are communicational, which are coordinational, and which where you have negotiable skill sets. These, I think, I mean, all the students have to focus, and you make your own strength out of these skills. This is what is going to help you in the long run. So unless you master yourself, I think, I mean, this is going to be a major point where how you set up your future is based on your skill sets here. Since everybody here is an aquaculture graduate that's going to come out in the near future, what are the advantages of aquaculture or fishery sector. Aquaculture for a better life. Why do you need that? I think I mean... So as a fishery... So actually, <clears throat> the thing is that we have uh, we have a notion that we are limited opportunity in the field of aquaculture. No, no, like I said, I mean, there are countless opportunities available, be it a government job or be it a private sector on-farm job or is it a processing side that you're looking at? On farm job. On farm. There's always farming sector which is growing. Today in Andhra, there is close to one lakh hectares of farming. One lakh hectares. That's not a small sum. So you'll always find a job. But individually doing a farming unit, if we consider. It is possible. If you want to do your own farming, so I think, I mean, we have an integration where we can give you seed, feed, complete know how, how to farm, and then bring your produce, and then we can buy back everything. Whatever you're looking at, you'll always find a solution. The problem is that, sir, uh, if we are individually doing a uh, small unit, right. the marketing issue is uh, considerably large for a person. I think, I mean, today marketability is a key, like you're saying, right? If you're producing shrimp here in Kerala, there are so many factories which are willing to buy your produce. There should not be any problem. Species you want to do, I mean, not the regular species of rohu katla, right? So that's freshwater species of fish that is cultured majority, but then here the new is 
high value addition fishes so sea bass you can really market for yourself there's a big market for that Good afternoon, sir. My name is Bibi. I am MSc Marai Microbiology student in Kofus. Sir, my query is that since this antibiotic resistance is a major threat in the health uh, sector, aqua health sector, so in your company, like how can, what is your like a thought of reducing the use of antibiotics in the sector? Okay. Yeah, I think I mean uh, when it comes to antibiotic testing, uh, I can proudly tell you that we are the the only company which has two LCMS machines where we do complete background check of all the raw material that is produced, I mean purchased, which is called pre-harvest test. So unless it is tested and it is proven that it is free of antibiotic, we don't market our product to the US or European markets. So it's like, you no, know, so I'm asking like in aquaculture, right. if there is an outbreak, right. we literally use antibiotics. No, these are banned, you're not supposed to use it. But, but now in a like in a common man like we right. we there is no out there they are not outreaching that like how to use or how to reduce the use of antibiotic is not outreaching so we look forward to do that like yeah this is this is done only through a lot of uh, uh, promotion through the government agency and is I mean I mean like what do you have like MPDA right MPDA has to do that Department of Fisheries they have to do a I mean a lot of mass cleaning asking farmers never to use antibiotics. Okay, farmer doesn't know where antibiotic is present. Today, the products that are sold for the farmers who are literally not educated, government has to endorse the product that this is antibiotic free. And this is happening in the industry right now. The government does a lot of branding where it is stamped in such a way that this is antibiotic free seed or feed or probiotics that are used in the industry. They have to be certified through government agency either through CAA, Coastal Aquaculture Authority, or through MPDA, which does the certification for hatchery, or through government of fisheries, be it Andhra Pradesh or be it Kerala state. Government is doing a lot of uh, vigilance entity to make sure that antibiotics are not present in the ingredients that are used by the farmers. That's the key. But yes, I mean, there are some which are positively, I mean, farmers knowingly, unknowingly are still using it, and uh, antibiotic... Uh, are tested positive in US FDA and the companies have been banned and uh, this is how the industry moves on. Everybody knows what the rule is, right? I mean, when you see a red light, you're supposed to stop, but I mean, right here, everybody knows where you do, where you're supposed to stop. Touch the line, don't touch the line, little crossover or full crossover. Everybody has his own judgment here. So uh, let us be very clear, be practical. When you see something which is red, you should stop. That's the key. Good morning, sir. My name is Anand Lakshmi. So my question is uh, that recently many tested have shown that uh, from the fish scales we can make band-aids yes. and bandages. Yes. Uh, so is there any activities related to this domain that your company is doing? Uh, we are not doing that, but then uh, what we do is, I mean, the uh, gallbladder that we separate in our fish processing that we do is given to a French-based company which is based out of Chennai. So they do that uh, value addition for human grade. So there's a lot of uh, process that is required because it is a human grade, right? So we are not into that human trials. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, thank for you. the insightful session. And uh, I would like, I would like to welcome, just a token of love, gift, sir, uh, Dr. Jayalakshmi, faculty from Kufos, to present a momentum. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So next, uh, taking this opportunity to welcome Dr. Manoj M. Sharma, 
uh, for yet another insightful session. Sir, please. Hello. So, good morning. I think, yeah, just good afternoon. Just at ten minutes. So it was very uh, energetic day for me. So because. I had a two, three minute talk with your chief minister. And then there is a great uh, motivation f uh, to meet Dr. Krishna Illa, the Padma Bhushan and the man behind the. So bef because when uh, Rakhila and the entire ASAP people, they have approached me that uh, Dr. Mano Sharma, the main purpose of this event is to uh, motivate the students to, because uh, additional skill acquisition program so I thought, you know, the, what best uh, I can talk to you because uh, I'm, I'm happy that I'm also an uh, aquaculture graduate student and so is, I think, <laughs> it's everybody here, that's all. So I'll start uh, by saying one thing which will keep you motivated in the presentation is that when I came to Surat uh, from Central Institute of Fisheries Education, I was having 500 rupees in my pocket as a scholarship money because we used to get 650 per month. Uh, I was talking about 91, 94 graduation, post-graduation. So we used to save 20, 30 rupees, whatever we used to save per month. And I was having 500 rupees, and that, then I landed in Surat. So while talking to you now from that 500 rupees, now my worth is uh, including all the companies, close to 100 crore rupees group. So how that has done and how, how it has been happened. So I will go to take you very simple way into the journey. So even I can achieve it as, as you said that everybody you sitting here can achieve it. So when I talk about blue revolution opportunity unlimited, as you said, there's an ocean of opportunity when, when you talk about blue revolution. But I'm sticking to my subject because um, uh, I'm blessed to do shrimp farming. So whatever I'm going today talk is talk about shrimp farming. So uh, India, as you know, when I was a student, India was sixth or seventh position in the world shrimp farming. And uh, we were uh, producing monodon, a black tiger. And uh, our production was close to 60,000, 70,000 ton on an average. But now, when I'm talking to you, I think India is uh, one of the top. Uh, still, there is a, a few thousand uh, difference between India and Ecuador. Sometimes Ecuador produces 40, 50,000 more. Sometimes we produce. So we are neck to neck producing close to 1 million ton, both this country. As you know, India has close to 150,000 uh, hectares of scientific. As you said, 1 lakh hectare itself is in Andhra Pradesh. So rest of the other states, we have closed that. And then we also have some traditional a belt of uh, uh, West Bengal. Then if you see the production, uh, we produce on an average 5 ton per hectare, which is a very good productivity compared to Ecuadorian and other Latin American countries. And we have almost like 50, 60,000 numbers of farmers. And uh, the smallest farmers, less than 5 hectare, we have more than 90% of the farmers. Rakhila, next. Rakhila, next. So you can see the era, the journey of uh, shrimp farming in India. You could see that we started with monodon in 1988 to 2009 was the era of monodon. Then you can see uh, the exotic species vanami. Here I will compare you if you are young to understand what is black tiger and vanami is like a country chicken versus the broiler chicken. You know, it is a simple comparison. When we imported this uh, bro broiler variety of vanami, then you could see there was unimaginable growth that whatever the industry was stagnant at 60, 65,000 tons has every year grown by leaps and bounds by almost like one lakh ton per year. And then now in 10 to 12 years, we are close to one million ton. But you could see that there was also a peak growth of 2013 to 2017. I, here, uh, I don't want to go much more scientific about discussion of what happened, what is the current capacity. As he said, 
every environment, every nature has the ability to take the heat and then it responds back. So, but now there is a downtrend and again the industry is thinking of going back to monodon, our original Indian species and now SPF programs and multiplication stock centers and nucleus breeding centers are coming back in India. Next. As I said, you can see 2010 when the Vanami era started in India, we were close to just uh, one lakh ton and you could see the massive, massive growth and now we have almost producing close to 10 lakh ton. Next. So as I said, my journey from a very small time technician to the most successful shrimp farmer, as I said, how it has happened. Next. You could see transforming lives in Gujarat. Uh, you could see in the map, uh, the highlighted portion is Gujarat. Then we started my journey with Black Tiger and you could see it's my own farm now. Next. But the journey was very, very beautiful, as I said, you know, when I was a student, uh, here I would like to say that you know, many people, they get dejected with the failures. But I'll tell you my story, you'll be surprised that when I was young, like 12th standard, learning science, so at that time everybody wants to become a medical uh, or engineer. That was the, that's the only option was I have. So I was, uh, I got 89.5% uh, something and I was not in the merit list for just 2%. And, my, and I got, a, that time, Union Territory was Goa, Maharashtra Goa, and they were having only two three seats for Maharashtra Kota. So I got admission there, but they sent me a, a telegram that since uh, Maharashtra Kota is a special seat, I cannot uh, be granted the fees, so I have to bond extra fees. That, was, that time was something 27, 28,000 per semester. And, and, and we were from a very, very struggling family that time. So imagine, I couldn't join medical and I was so dejected. So I did commerce for one year. And I started playing cricket. I was very good in the cricket. I was to play for my district team. And then there was also I lost the chance because there was no IPL, nothing, only for the Ranji Trophy or the test. And there were thousands and thousands of good players from Mumbai, Pune. Then I said, what to do? You know, so one, one, one fine day, again, my, my teacher came and he asked me, how your medical studies are going on? I'm telling this story because it will motivate you. I said, good, sir, I'm doing good. So somehow we came to know that I'm not doing uh, my medical studies and I'm doing my commerce. So he came and he holded my ear and took back me to the college and said, this new science has come, fish and fisheries. Why are you wasting time? You're a good science student. Uh, let one year waste it, but please join uh, this fish and fisheries science. So how then again I dropped commerce and joined fish and fisheries science. And then there was a very good attraction for fish and fisheries. And when I was in the final year, there was an advertisement from Government of India that UPSC board, that they will include animal husbandry, dairy, and fisheries into the main subject. I was so thrilled. I said, more I got. First, maybe I will be an uh, administrative officer or an IPS or something like that. So I prepared so much for that. So the final advertisement came. They had considered animal husbandry, dairy, and fisheries was omitted. <laughs> so, <laughs> So <laughs> now what to do? So it's, it's like all journey. So one fine day, uh, uh, there was an agriculture research services exam. And uh, they said, uh, if you pass this exam, you will be admitted to uh, CIFE on special program. That was the first batch of UNDP. So I admitted, I, 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 I came into the merit list and as I got admission into CIFE, in Masters uh, in Aquaculture Management. And they were all officers training, you know, like diploma in fisheries. And, and my subject was equivalent to master's degree. So after that, I completed and faced a fantastic interview in Maharashtra Fisheries Development uh, Corpor Corporation. And they gave me an appointment later. I went back, married to a beautiful wife. And after 15 days, they have again given me a letter that my post was withheld because there was a turnaround in politics and they say, you will be no more any class two, a class one officer. So you have to reappear for the next interview. So what to do? So one fine day, my guru, A. Krishna Reddy from Vijayawada, is now based in Vijayawada. That time he was my aquaculture head. Maybe a lot of faculty people, they know CIFE and Dr. A. Krishna Reddy. He called me, Manoj, there is a good opportunity in Surat, Gujarat, but they will pay you only 2,200 rupees per month. Will you go? I said, I have no choice, sir, I will go. And that is how my life has been transformed. I went to Gujarat, 
and you'll 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 imagine the day i landed in gujarat i still remember it was 28th of september and there was only one connection from the old surat to new surat is the hope bridge which was built by the britishers and the flood water was touching that bridge so they have cut down the route and the deadly disease after that that was a massive flood of 1994 gujarat where the uh, the uh, plague has been erupted back i was not knowing gujarati some hindi marathi english and how i stayed there there was no communication no phone can't call back to my place my wife my mother but i somehow survived that into a local restaurant called meena hotel which was 16 km away from surat and that has then later played a very very important role in my life so i was sitting into that hotel you can you imagine me right now talking to you i have worked in that hotel for 6 months lifting the plates serving the food because he used to give me one time free meal and 300 rupees uh, money to uh, spend and that is how i started my journey and from there uh, the, see i can tell you this whole long day story but you know to cut short that was the one origin where i met uh, very good people like pradeep navik who was a very convent student well educated he was the sarpanch of that local village and then he met me and we discussed that shrimp farming can be done so we started with four ponds in dandi and uh, that result has sparked everybody's eye you know the shrimp can be grown right in front of their eyes salt affected wasteland which was they were never ever used to uh, do any good out of that and believe me that four pond success even didn't get any time for me to even look back you know four became 40 40 became 400 4 became 4000 now when i'm talking to you there are 25000 hec- acres of land which has been developed and the industry from nothing uh from zero to at the spinning around like 2600 crores of business uh, benefiting 1600 farmers and lakhs and lakhs of people and this has this has happened in the span of just 6 7 years continuous hard work this is what i'm i'm going to tell you next now you could see me see see this is my picture in 1978 98 i'm working almost like a labor at the farm they used to give me 80 rupees uh, even for the harvest so i used to harvest and this is me this is me you could see the skinny one in between working on a, f- a fish farm uh, collecting as you said uh, spawning uh, katla roe mrigal next you could see this picture uh, this picture was shown in aqua vision i was the one after 26 years in, uh, somebody invited me into in europe vision you see me selling hand pick you know once the harvest is done there is some outlet the some prawns will remain there so i used to carry them wash them and take it on cycle or uh, on auto or somewhere and sit on the embankment on the main road you could see the dandi panchayat village school still is there and this and i was the most happy person to receive this picture after 28 years because the guy who purchased this uh, um, uh, what would you say the basket of the shrimp was working in uh, abu dhabi he was from this village so he was having some kodak tan camera he took the picture i don't know but after 26 years he has uh, emailed me this picture and i was so so happy you see from doing this kind of a uh, job and you I and mean, the labor sitting next to me is from uh, bihar his name is jitu and uh, i was 26 or 7 and he was that time same of my age and this gentleman is still with me and he is now a partner in the same firm so this is this is what earning from a dollar to making a million dollar business now today you could see all this european foreign clients they come to my farm you could see the nfdb chief executive uh, doc, dr rani kumbidani she was visiting my farm next you could see then my journey from uh, uh, jinga to jingalala jinga is called prawn and jingalala is my latest venture of domestic market next you could see uh, the this is the Ar- google archive you can you can also search in 2009 you we just started with few 30 40 ponds in this area and when they they have seen that there is a huge income massive turnaround of dust now you can see in 2000 next you can 2018 you could see the huge like 4000 ponds have been erected so you can say in one way i was uh, never gave up in my life so there was no nothing to work somebody asked the question sir where to work which company will absorb you but imagine i built a company around me to work <laughs> from nothing you know next 
as as he has very well covered um, uh, jogi raju what what is uh, westland is converted into bus product you it's a highly labor intensive it can provide uh, four time more than the agriculture agriculture can create 160 to 180 man days but aquaculture especially shrimp farming fish farming has the power to create more than 600 to 800 man days it's a great foreign earner uh, i was very impressed when uh, in 2005 uh, i got an opportunity uh, to be pa took part in the vibrant gujarat summit when our honorable uh, pm was that time uh, the chief minister and finance secretary i told them ki sir this you know the word what would be used now globally west to wealth the reverse migration the reverse migration they were very excited they asked me doctor what is reverse migration i say people are going from villages to work in topmost cities and aquaculture has the power to attract them back to the village so this is where i use the word the uh, reverse migration and so that's how uh, the immense immense you imagine salt affected land gujarat we have 4 lakh hectares of salt affected land which has been not useful for thousands and thousands of years. Now today, can you believe when somebody uh, uh, very dispassionately, he just just gave me a thrust out of his office, he said, bullshit, you know, shrimp, shrimp, nothing, even go, go, you go out. I said, sir, but you have a fantastic land. If you want to take it, 500 rupees per uh, acre per year rent. Okay, nothing is there, you take it. But now imagine the same land, now today market value is 25 lakh rupees per acre because it is spinning huge dollars. Next. It's, then again, it's not about me. I'm going to tell you how, how aquaculture shrimp farming has transformed lives of thousands and lakhs of people around me. This is nothing to do with aquaculture, but I will tell you, then you will imagine the magnitude, the impact of, as you said, uh, acquired you know, additional skill uh, acquisition program, what you say. You could see now, this is a tractor fellow. His name is uh, I, I am forgetting a name, uh, his, his surname is Rana. So he was one, his elder brother was with me, he is the younger one. They started with one tractor. They used to come tile the pond, lay as per the, my thing. But today can you imagine? As such, there are 6,000 tractor fellows working in my area. Every time, every season they need uh, repair and maintenance. Second, the tempo fellow, his name is Kunni Bhai. He was earlier working with me. Now you imagine one lakh ton of feed. And you, 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 you know that is, two ton can be carried in an eye or this kind of a mini tempo. Imagine one lakh divided by two ton. Thousands and thousands of ferry. They need to go to this pond, to that pond, supply. Like this now there are thousands of people working in my area. This, this uh, Parsi fellow, they were on the verge of closing this ice factory. Because only in the month of March, April, May, there was like piping hot uh, summer in Gujarat. So they used to cater the small ice to the wedding ceremonies, local ice gola and all this. And then our season started, which was mostly harvested in June, July. Their factory was closed. Now these people are having five ice plants. Because we are harvesting almost 50,000 ton out of 25,000 ton. One ton requires uh, one and a half ton of ice. So imagine the kind of scale is developed. The engineering, the palms, because in aquaculture, we talk about aquaculture. So one, one, one hectare requires at least 20 HP. So imagine when we develop 12,000 hectare, so massive pump and that requirement. So I'm trying to tell you, it's not about me or it's not about one farmer is earning. Because of that, one hectare is giving indirectly, directly 40, 40 people and livelihood opportunity. That's immense. This grocery, you will not believe grocery because 16,000 labor immigrant label they are working with us. What kind of food and what kind of a grocery mobilization is required? Next. Even the harvesting labor, one labor will get now 700 rupees to harvest. He will just come as a skill. You talk about skill here in, because these people, they, how many people, you know, if you see there, if there are lakhs of lakhs of people, hardly 1% people doesn't know, you know how, how to throw the cast net. Even out of you, if you'll start learning how to throw cast net, come to Surat, you will be getting a salary of 50,000 rupees per month. Will you believe? Just to throw the cast net because it is so important for biometrics. You need someone who is skilled to throw a cast net. It's not, you ask Mr. Raju, it's a tough job. You, no hanky-panky, anybody can just throw the cast net. It's skill. They hold it in fingers and then throw. So such cast netters, they do partial harvesting now. They're earning in lakhs and lakhs of rupees. 
people who come for this mason work, do outlet, inlets, massive. But I want to tell this fascinating story of this young man who is sitting next to this tanker. He was a blacklisted in police station. A full alcoholic, but he's lucky that his farmland, his private land, was on the exactly a passage going to the shim farming. So this fellow usually would like look, look Dadagiri, stand there, put a chair, and don't, don't allow anybody to pass through that road. So everybody used to give him 50 rupees, 100 rupees, somehow let him be busy in drinking. So I, he, I met him, I said, why, why you're doing all this thing? He said, what to do? I don't have anything. This, is, this land grows nothing agriculture. So I told him, you have such a good bore. I tested uh, his uh, uh, bore well water, and it was sweet. I told him, why don't you start supplying waters to our labors? Because we are working into uh, seashore. We don't get potable water there. He started develop, He has started this uh, 30, 35,000 tanker and now. And every trip, he takes 700 rupees. Can you believe? Every day, he puts 20 to 30 trips. Now, he is him. He is out of liquor habit. Now, he's every hour, he is getting 700 rupees. Though where is time? No time to drink now. He, he, means, he will drink means he's 700 rupees gone. Now his brother, his uh, brother-in-laws, his father, like this, 20, 25 people are working in that area, just supplying potable water. That, that kind of a massive industry has been developed. Next. Next. And this beautiful opportunity came into my life in 2010. Suddenly I received a call. Hey, uh, you are Manoj Sharma. I said, yes, I am Manoj Sharma. He's saying, your na name has been randomly selected. Have you uh, answered our any questions? So I said, I, 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 what to say? I said, you might be yes, okay. But my son, he did that. Because when I was very diehard in need of money, this show started, I never ever got this chance to go to this show. But when I was earning very good, <laughs> so then finally I got this call and I was the third Indian to reach the final one crore question. And uh, uh, what industry has not done the popularization of shrimp farming in Gujarat? which has been t telecasted to 116 countries and suddenly the shrimp farming, you know, even uh, uh, just part of the joke, my father-in-law has rejected me because I was working in aquaculture. Means in, in, in layman Hindi, they say, oh, oh, machi pakadne ka kaam karta hai. So, <laughs> but after this show and everything, then people understand how this subject has been glorified, you know, how this... Uh, subject of being smelly, fishy business to such a corporate and uh, glorified business. And even Amitabh Bachchan himself was very fascinated that how this small good work of us as uh, providing such a good livelihood to lakhs and lakhs of people. Next. Next. Then this is my company in 2005 I started. Now I have uh, 400 hectares, 200 hectares of mine and 200 hectares with partnership. We produce annually 1,000 tons of shrimp and we uh, only farming, but including uh, feed, distribution, in, uh, and I also have a factory in Marseille for probiotics. Altogether, our group is 100 crore plus. Next. We grow Vanami, left side and right time is the tiger. And uh, my USP is to grow the one of the very biggest size, which is very super niche demand in the market and hardly a uh, lot of skill is required to reach to that sizes. So I, I generally odd an odd man out. You know, there is always a rush for this kind of big size, because generally in India, if you see the world, the shrimps are mostly produced 20 to 25 gram and sold. So I grow up to 50, 60, 70 grams. So idea is that if you can do that, you can make three crop uh, crop profit in one crop, and also give a lot of breathing uh, and uh, rejuvenation time to your own motherland. Next, next. And then what next? Yes. So he has beautifully covered about what education system is required, what students can do. But I will just show you very good options that how you yourself can do that. Next. 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 So inland cage culture is in reservoir lakes and dam is a, is a fantastic opportunity. Uh, if, if you see the economics, NFDB has all the economics, but I can say that even with 20... 30 lakh rupees investment, you can happily earn 10 to 12 lakh rupees per annum. Next. Next. These are the candidate species where, where if anybody wants to do, can can do this. Next. You can do open sea cage. Because right now, there is no suitable uh, such sites in India because we have very rough sea. 
uh, in west coast and east coast uh, there are some good patches especially but it's a very costly affair where investments are more than crore rupees but still somebody wants to do because cmfri and kerala this side uh, there is a huge demand for marine fish so some people you want to do you can do that next these are the candidate species for this next next this is what uh, mr yogi raju was talking about that his fortune changer was like inland fish farming in andhra pradesh also is still the mother mother state to now i think when i'm talking to you nfdb figures shows that we are producing more than 150 lakh tons of uh, this fish and traded all over india next these are the candidate species katla roe mirgal and also pangasius magur singhi you can do that and don't worry about my presentation will be available here i love to share with each and everybody so nothing to worry about it even rakhila can give presentation whoever you want next next so ornamental fish culture i think girls will be loved because i have seen many girls those who have started this backyard are now earning lakh to lakh rupees per month next this so this is a wonderful job this is a wonderful business i think and here you really if you develop your skill experience i think you can make huge money in backyard system next these are the candidate species next you can do seaweed now seaweed is a fashion it's a multi billion dollar industry and he's also very close to the heart of uh, mr modi because he loves uh, women empowerment and i think this is a very good subject next these are the candidate species where you can do that and especially for the this uh, seaweed seed farm you know basically where you can say the hatchery or nursery has a huge huge biotechnological potential anybody who is more into research oriented uh, liking can really opt for this next diverse india diverse uh, needs huge diversification we have this potential we have 8000 plus kilometer we have uh, ec ec exclusive economic zone we have 1.2 million hectare 3.5 million hectare of the brackish water and fresh water land next and and when i am talking about it now last 25 years i had worked very hard to develop uh, shrimp farming and uh, creating livelihood but since covid has come to india and the world over we have seen there's uh, there's a lot of disruption there's a lot of problems so maybe in our era now earlier we used to remember uh, if before ad and bc but now we will remember pre covid era or post covid era in our life because it has really transformed after followed by covid then there is a global recession again now ukraine russia war so entire shrimp farming uh, what i feel is that we we are all export oriented our shrimp farming is 99% export oriented so last two three years farmers have faced a tremendous loss and setback so i feel that uh, based on uh, the amul model the taste of india do 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 the white revolution has started so the poultry sunday hoya monday roz khayande that that slogan has created a massive development so i thought let's do something on that line and uh, since i'm a very popular uh, among farmers and a known face if i'll do that i will do that then many will follow that so my idea is very simple whatever we produce is if you see the national health survey uh, 75% of population is non vegetarian so out of 140 crore 75 is almost 75 crore population is a non vegetarian if you imagine they eat only 1 kilo per year so this whatever we produce right now can be easily consumed in our own country and they will get a better realization for their price and that will be a big support and sustainability for the shim farmers to survive because farmer entire business is farmer centric if farmer survives the whole value chain in the industry survives whatever the mammoth industry uh, mr yogi raju has spoken about actually fundamentally starts and ends with farmer so if farmer doesn't produce nothing becomes more because hatchery is for farmer feed mills are farmer processing for farmer technicians are farmer you guys are studying for farmers so if farmers i consider to be the main main game changer next so this is how i started uh, jingalala and then i studied a lot about it that only giving a packet of shrimp uh, will not suffice so people should also know the culinary habits because i am coming from gujarat where vegetarian is very peak so people doesn't know about shrimp and how to cook the shrimp so i started this jingalala res the restaurant next you could see is a very small this is the previous one with just uh, 45 people sitting but 
all farm raised shrimp i had 50 uh, beautiful designed uh, uh, farm raised shrimp cuisines next you could see a slight glimpse of what we used to serve in our restaurant but i started with little jittery mind that whether vegetarian state whether it will run or not but when i opened i remember it was 9 june 2019 and six month lockdown came so all my effort of 2 crore rupees has gone into vain then i was having one option to close it or to move ahead but whatever the skill i have developed whatever the cooks and chef i have developed i need to retain them so i thought another six, another 12 month if i do that i might lose 60 70 lakh rupees in holding them and paying them the salaries and all but my heart says let's do that and finally it paid off after the after the second vaccination drive and then when each and everything was open now friday saturday sunday everything we can see like one one hour waiting outside my restaurant and line up now i have uh, recently developed uh, three time more space now 2500 square foot i have developed and there also now there is a waiting of one one hour for friday saturday sunday next so this is how i say that a farmer survive the whole industry survives so cumulative effort must be brought by the industry players farmers union various organization to support the domestic market drive and i think that is going to really help each and everybody next and finally as as i said you know i i think that you know even somebody like me who, who has done this wonderful job if out of you if become few also becomes on my path and become manoj sharma so we have 758 districts in our country if manoj can done something good in surat district imagine uh, how many immense opportunities there to do that if and i strongly believe if the additional knowledge experience and skill will pass on to young generation like you i think the opportunities are immense and remember we are growing food and profit for all so don't just become a job seeker try to be a job giver thank you and i loved talking to you guys if you have any question i'll be more than happy to answer you or any questions any any damn thing you want to ask i'll be happy to reply the students are requested to ask their queries if there are any it'll be great if with the if this is more interactive so if you have any query or like if you want to know more about the career prospects you can ask both of the people both of the eminent speakers are here so you can uh, give your comments and also you have if you have any queries you can ask no either you understood or didn't understood anything <laughs> so somebody ask uh, mr raju that you know uh, varma ji that uh, what kind of opportunity this industry can give to young graduates remember one thing you are going with as he said we are going with impractical knowledge to an industry because you are more of an academic as he said that uh, even i am a very uh, advocate of that that your last semester should be industry oriented it should be a practical oriented so first of all the faculties are here student those who didn't get an exposure to the farm i request you first 2 3 years whatever you like for example you like ornamental fishes go and work in the ornamental industry for 2 3 years it's it because it will open up your mind to indigenous trade skills because today also at the age of 52 i'm still learning i'm still getting excited what i go to the farm every day there is a new thing everything is a new because as as you start your crop even the age of the pond even the years of the crop everything matters so what you do into uh, first crop and another second crop you need to be advanced by 20 30% then only how you can succeed that so farm training is very very important for you if you want to do business somebody asked me sir what about if i want to do start one or two acre no problem but go there at least two three crops work because you will learn the intricacy the small trade skills directly you jump into any business it is not good even today i i am worse with each and every aspect but when i st- want to start at hatchery i i visited hatchery many time even stayed there for 10 15 days to understand the what is nopli how it will convert to zuya to mycelia how it will affect then i started jingalala i work with chefs for 6 6 month i want to learn that small small things how the shrimp how it cooks because lot of the hotel when they cook the shrimps uh, like a mutton or chicken it becomes rubbery and so we 
lot of chefs, they started, you know, even 90% of the chefs, world-class chefs, they don't know how to cook the shrimp. So we have developed all these skills. It was learning phase, taking pictures, photograph, masala, marination process. We have gone through that. Then only we'll learn. So important for you is not to just jump into a job. You know, you have to first acquire the skill, the indigenous trade knowledge. Then only you'll be super successful. And believe me, even, even if you have one hectare, two hectare, if you are skillful, you can earn lakhs and lakhs of rupees, even better than an IAS and IPS officers. So don't just think. See, I think, I think the, for me today, I feel very happy, you know, when uh, I was a planning commission member, I was into advisories of ministers, I was into the state planning commission. So whatever I didn't, never want to become, I became, I achieved that. Now today, I was very fascinated when somebody in 2017, few top IS batch people, they called me from Gujarat. I said, uh, this is regarding, sir, no, sir, we are fresh, we are into training on Indian administrative services, and uh, the subject of shrimp farming in Gujarat development has been allotted to us to, as a case study. So wherever we're talking about shrimp farming, your name is popping out first. So I, I said, I want to become an IS, but today I was very happy that all that particular batch of IS were studying on the subject of shrimp farming development in Gujarat. So all this we can have. I wanted to become a doctor, so I didn't do my PhD. Actually, I got an awarded this PhD on action research because whatever shrimp farming I developed in India, uh, Gujarat, uh, uh, former fishery survey of India, Dr. Somanshi, he is, he is no more with us. He left the heavenly abode. So he came and he visited us and he said, Manoj, you have done such a wonderful job for uh, export-oriented shrimp farming and community of people. Why don't you compile a thesis and submit? I will talk to Usmania University, that one, Hyderabad Usmania is the most reported, and Dr. Ravi Shankar Piska, he was, he was the, the, my examiner, and, and he invited me uh, to Hyderabad, to this university, and it was so casual, you know. They offered tea, and they asked me here and there some good questions about the industry, and then finally he said, uh, congratulations, Dr. Sharma. So I was, I, was, I was like shocked. I said, sir, you, told, you asked me that you want to take exam. He said, you are the master of the shrimp farming subject. We should learn from you. So how we can give you a cross-questionation? And you have done a, such a fantastic job for the community. So this PhD was awarded to me. So I became doctor. I became <laughs> so many things. So believe in hard work. There is nothing. There is, as you said, there is no substitute to hard work. Today, when I'm talking to you, but if you really dig into my struggle and ask anybody in Gujarat, I used to sleep on pond, I used to work in hotels, I used to uh, do many things, you know, which uh, is difficult for me also emotionally to tell you. So life is hard, it's not easy. And if you think you're fascinated, you're, you're, you're fond of making money, believe me, uh, the path to money is not easy. <laughs> that to be an honest money is not easy. So I wish you all the best if I think, if me and uh, uh, Jogi Raju uh, Verma has given any motivation to you, try to be one of us. So that, that way you can serve the community, serve the society. If, this, if people are prosperous, society is prospered, the nation will become prosperous. Thank you. Love you all. Thank you so much, sir. Is there any questions? Yeah, we do have a question. Uh, sir, my name is Anuj Sarma. And, uh, yes, sir. So, uh, sir, currently we are uh, in our final year. Uh, we are in final year and uh, we are doing our internship at uh, uh, one fish processing plant. So when we ask them why you are not uh, uh, exporting the final product, because China and some other country, Vietnam, they are export, importing only raw product like octopus, shrimp, and uh, they give a reason that uh, when they export directly to U, uh, U.S. or Europe, they have they don't accept by Indian name. So China is uh, more toward giving, providing best quality products. Sir, why, why is the reason, sir? I think, I think very sorry to tell you. Anuj, you are talking about 20, 30 years backstory. <laughs> I think he is the right example, live example in front of you. Now I think, uh, my young brother, India has the most reputed uh, shrimp supply else in the world. 
you are talking about something you know like monjo daro harappa is uh, <laughs> no, uh, no no i am just telling you don't don't uh, just uh, rate yourself with one or two uh, small time processors experience but today i'll tell you indian shrimp is the most opted shrimp in the world and we have such a huge reputation if i have see there is not a single country in this world where they do shrimp farming and i have been not invited and i'll very very proudly tell you our shrimps in our ponds are one of the best in the world but yes as 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 a one of the most uh, respected processor sitting in front of me and i am a farmer is a processor hand so we need uh, because the sensitive part because as we have large number of farmers and small small ponds uh, our pre harvest uh, and post harvest handling is little bit uh, which has to be updated if we do that i think it's unstoppable our shrimps our fishes are best in the world and our brand has the most value and respect so so uh, don't 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 come into that okay okay sir thank you any more questions yes sir my name is pramila uh, i'm a faculty in the uh, kufos uh, so, so i will come back to uh, second third fourth i'm coming to kufos again yeah we'll meet sir <laughs> Sir, uh, you were telling about uh, that. Um, I mean, uh, that uh, monotone is now reverting. Uh, there's a shift from anime to. Yeah. So, yeah. what exactly is the reason for that, sir? What exactly is the reason for that? I mean, is it because ah, of yeah. the demand? Yeah. See, uh, I'll tell you. The reason is that because uh, the foreigner is not uh, able to settle in India, because this is an exotic species, anime, and which is still coming. All the brush stocks and everything is coming from uh, America. what hap actually happened you know uh, there is a, a a very thin line term called uh, carrying capacity now if you imagine what we used to produce monodon we used to produce 2 ton 3 ton when 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 we were into monodon era our productivity indian productivity was hardly less than 400 uh, kg per hectare now the, when venami came our productivity went up to 5.5 ton and some farmers or even crossed uh, 50 ton 60 ton production but whatever uh, 10 to 13 years we have pulled on thanks to the uh, very diligent uh, rules and regulation and the guidelines created by department of fisheries and the especially the cap not more than 60 piece has helped us to survive uh, one and 1.2 uh, decade but now what's happening uh, as you seen you have you remember my one picture there was 40 pond and then suddenly 4500 ponds so that has given a, a a negative carrying capacity of the particular system i will simply design is that like if i am today is 78 kilo i can carry 10 kilo bag on my shoulder maybe whole day but can i carry a 40 kilo bag on my shoulder whole day i might die uh, uh, before that by the heart attack so the entire system has a natural holding carrying capacity and i think uh, he he has put up a very beautiful line i think still i was studying that whether how much people use it aquaculture is a profitable business unless and until the farmer becomes greedy that was his line it was a greed so greed to, today i'll tell you on a very good example i was in uh, recently called in bangladesh now every six month they call me so i was talking to uh, Uh, all the farmers in bangladesh there were 6 700 farmers after my talk one farmer came and asked me sir uh, which is the most dangerous disease in shrimp farming i said number 2 is white spot then number 3 is vibrio number 4 is ehp then he said no sir number 1 i am asking i said i we ask shrimp disease i started again counting number 2 he got it first said, no sir number 1 i said greed greed is still the number 1 disease because lalach because you want more 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 of the farm and but sometimes your nature answers back so disease is what this disease is there is imbalance between the uh, negative carrying capacity so what happened suddenly wherever you see now the great success of ecuador you ask a very big question sir suddenly the practices of ecuador has improved i have been to ecuador 13 times now every expo they invite me and whatever the knowledge as as he said in case about our processing even even our shrimp farming technique and technology is one of the best uh, uh, now the whole world is copying us especially my one concept of uh, farming the venami the tiger way has been now adopted by ecuador now they are doing 12 piece 15 piece 20 piece and then they are leading the world their cost of production has come down everything is very good so once we have overdone with venami because we have trying to overdo that so now each and every 
negativity we have brought into the waters. So that has reduced the production and profitability. Now last year, if we'll say 50, 60 percent farmer in Vanami, those who are doing, are not doing uh, earning money. Reason is not only the disease, but it is the cumulative effect of that. I will say post-COVID, labor mobilization, the raw material purchase, I think feed price has gone up to 20 to 25 percent. Uh, right, right, Varmaji? And then also there is a reduction of uh, European price or American price by another 20-25%. So all this factor has mounted on the head of the farmers. Plus farmers are also facing some issues, and in, uh, farming issues. So that, so that has led back to bring into monodon. The beauty of monodon is that it can be grown in 150 days to 50-60 grams. So the cost of production versus the price is fetching is still very attractable. So still farmers can earn two, two, three dollar happily. So that's sir, where... Sir, which one is uh, more in demand in the overseas market? See, you'll be surprised ma'am to know, up to 2010, India was indigenously a black tiger and the whole world used to import the brand by saying Indian black tiger. But 13 years, we have completely neglected black tiger. For example, you have somebody a vendor who comes to your shop and then you buy some vegetables or milk or even peanuts from him. If you are buying, he will start coming regular. But if you don't buy for one month or two months, he will stop coming to your shop. Same thing happened with us because India was an out of and monodon country and we have each and every niche we have um, competed with mono, Vanami. And so there was nothing production, hardly 5-6,000 ton, I think West, West Bengal is traditional. So there was no monodon market, there was no production. So entire monodon, uh, those who like to import or those who have the uh, monodon market, they have shifted to uh, West Bengal, Bangladesh or Vietnam. Now suddenly we, we, we want to go, go back to monodon. So we also need to go back to the markets first. It's not like that we are dependent upon the 100% dependent upon the exports. So if you have a domestic market, anything can go. Desi chicken will go, country chicken will go, broiler will also go. But if suddenly the entire market is broiler and you are bringing in a country chicken there, then again there will be a competition. So I think those who are listening to me via this program, uh, farmers, it is important uh, to go to shift to monodon, but double important to go to the markets first. That is the more, more important thing. Thank you, sir. sir. One more question. So being a uh, big scale farmer, what do you do to avoid uh, impacts to the environment? What, what ma'am, come again? Uh, sir, you are doing it on a very large scale, farming. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to avoid impacts to the, uh, I mean, uh, to the environment? See, stream farming, aquaculture creates a bad element to uh, environment. Uh, to me, my experience is, is itself is a very uh, hyped statement. I, generally, we have uh, our nitrogenous wastewater, we, we see, I'll tell you one simple thing. Let's not make it complicated. We had an issue in 1996-97 that uh, aquaculture is creating pollution. And there was Supreme Court ban, so many things. So even, even when I started my career, we were having such 30-40 ponds and uh, the Supreme Court uh, regulation came and everybody has to go through the assessment of Pollution Control Board. So we are all farmers been called to uh, the head office of Pollution Control Board Gujarat. And uh, they were all were debating about how shrimp farming is creating pollution, how fish farming is creating pollution. There is a COD, BOD values. So I was listening, I was very young, struggling. I was having just t-shirt, jeans, not properly dressed also. So I raised my finger and I asked the gentleman officer, I said, what is your highest regard uh, test in Pollution Control Board? He said, uh, what it has to do with this uh, meeting? I said, sir, I think it is something to do with that. He said, fish sensitivity test. Then I said, we are all small, small farmers, sir. We don't know much detail about fish sensitivity test. Can you please elaborate how the test is done? He said, you, whatever samples you bring in, we put it into an aquarium and we release some fishes. If the fishes survive 24 hours, that, solo, that um, sample, uh, we don't term it as a pollutant. That's called fish sensitivity test. Then I said, sir, fish we grow one year, harvest live and sell. Shrimp we grow four months, five months in the same water, we harvest live and sell. Within 24 hours, the fish survives, you are saying it's a non-polluting water, and we grow it for one year and uh, grow for six months, then how come my waters can be a pollutant? And the meeting was dispersed. 
so there are many 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 things you know in our country uh, which are superimposed to us because of lack of awareness even lot of officer doesn't know what's what's happened and lot of farmers are also ignorant about the rules and regulation so i think e even for a very safe i think aquaculture authority has done a fantastic job even department of fisheries they have mandated compulsory that every farm which is about an hectare has to have a etp in the model of physical settlement Uh, uh, biological settlement and recirculation so i think uh, if for me if you ask me sir you have a, such a large farm so 10% of my portion is in recirculation with physical and biological settlement so we ensure whatever water is releasing outside the environment is at par with the creek cod and bod values we do maintain that thank you sir okay I think time is over. Or? Hello, so my name is Eldo. Uh, name is Eldo. Eldo, E L D H O. Sir, okay. okay. I still don't know where she lives. She told me two, three times, but sorry. So actually, <laughs> I can tell me once more. <laughs> present scenario of Kerala. I would like to reiterate my question because that was not clear from my part. Hmm. Uh, we have uh, several schemes like pmssy and uh, kerala subhiksha kerala paddhi like that which uh, pr which promotes inland aquaculture but thing is that uh, recently ras bioflock etc has been uh, has been like uh, means you are not able to get the benefit and that uh, the thing that. is that uh, we have been uh, promised that the farmers have uh, been promised uh, understood that understood first thing first thing do you have land yes you have land yes. your own land okay which district you are the nearest fisheries Arnold. officer you have to connect okay. if you want to go to pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana benefits i don't know whether you have in kerala or not maybe if yeah, not i have. think asap we you have. can uh, catch hold of this uh, officers of asap because now uh, prashottam rupala sahab is union fisheries minister and the one of the most successful mo model of land lease uh, policies of gujarat where each and every aquaculture professional graduate gets 5 hectare of his choice whether uh, uh, fresh water land or brackish water land or even cage farming whatever you want to do if you are a graduate you have to go to your collector because but by default he is the district land committee chairman so you have to approach collector sir ki sir i am a graduate of fisheries i have this land this is the detail of the land and i want to enroll into pwmsy so the fisheries officer will evaluate your land will maybe he will give you guideline whatever you want to do and that scheme scheme paper can be forwarded to your uh, state level committee and then finally it will go to nfdb if it is less than 5 hectare state fisheries will allowed if it is more than that they are enormous scheme but thing is that you need to run pillar to post by yourself you just can't put an application on an india and wait that good thing will come to you automatically to your door you need to rub your sandals boot chappal whatever you wear you have to go you have to nag and sit in front of me till you pass your scheme <laughs> that is that is that is the way how it works in india so after the culture is done ha huh. example uh, the scenario is i am myself i am a bioflock farmer hmm. so uh, the thing is that first of all we are not getting the uh, expected amount of uh, production from bioflock farms most of the bioflock farms which in uh, kerala is not getting the uh, projected amount of what they set and also when they started uh, for example tilapia had 200 kilo uh, 200 rupees for 1 kg but since lot of farmers are uh, cultivating in the uh, obviously the price has come, come down and some of them have stop, stopped farming also so what can we do as a pro fisheries professional to provide them a proper flow of income so that they cannot stop see i'll tell you this bioflock i either whether this forum i should say or not but it's more of an internet sensation you know what is bioflock you ask me question do yourself you know what is bioflock that's the problem we just follow some sensations some things you know something catchy what we want bioflock is nothing it's a heterotrophic system where where uh, the beneficial bacteria are so much produced when they they bump to each other they they form of a, a bio mass mass of uh, bacteria with detritus and other proteinaceous things algae and all and that has been filtered out by fishes primarily it was uh, 
uh, when before the bioflock it was named something like algal soup and it was uh, basically uh, tried and tested on tilapia because tilapia has the strongest gill rackers and they are the filter feeders now when you talk katla bioflock sir venami bioflock tiger bioflock pangasius bioflock are bioflock when you cannot filter it out and cannot convert into your muscle growth is of no use second good question i will tell you when you are producing into a limited empowerment of 1 lakh liter or 2 lakh liter tank with 24 hours energy high tech feed your cost of production of a fish itself will cross 200 rupees and then you have to compete into the same market which is somebody from the kerala backwater is freely fishing and bring in dumping into the market for 80 rupees a kilo so how you going to survive so when somebody ask me dr sharma why don't you do black flock i said i don't do if i am not doing being such a progressive farmer that means it doesn't working for uh, our concept that doesn't mean that biotechnology bioflock technology is wrong or right but it is not right now it is not fitting into our shoes the timing of that such advanced technology is not good for india right now because when you go to dams lakes and reservoir even with uh, verma ji's farm you go he still produces 80 85 rupees katla ro mrigal and sells at 110 rupees with 10 sometimes even 2 rupees minus right sir so in that case if you want to do for the sake of bioflock and you want to produce at 200 rupees a kilo you are doomed you are doomed so you have to understand right now indians are fit for maruti cars not for ferrari that doesn't mean that ferrari doesn't have a technology so you before that see i'll tell you one very good thing about my success if you try to do something before that time you are failure if you try to do something beyond the time you are a failure so you have to catch it when things are going so so one who changes with the change survive one who predict the change will grow one who bring the change will lead it's simple so just don't just follow all this rut otherwise you will confuse yourself and and again i ask you before you asking me third question ke sir we don't get this prize we don't first start producing it i don't think that even even gujarat people used to ask me same this foolish question are bhai tum jhinga pakayega bikega kon gujarat mein bikega kon who will buy in gujarat but now you will tell you when i am talking to you 5 to 6 ton shrimp is sold into the local uh, surat market because the market has been grown people will tell you nobody will accept because there is no production the market is waiting for you to produce something and you will produce people will start accept. otherwise see in a non vegetarian state where people have never seen the shrimp I, first time when i show them they thought it's a cockroach that state has now grown to be the third largest state and spinning 2800 crore business anything is possible kuch bhi ho sakta hai desh mein you you stay then only people will notice you you start changing your position one down to one and then people will forget you you go stand in somebody's house do an experiment go and just stand in somebody's house he will he will see five ten minute and they'll ask you hey what do you want uh, asking for address or something maybe you three four days continuous road he will put you to the police so you stay in the you stay in the line that you stay in front of the people then people will see you you know that's where you know i really love and like uh, the quote from silosus talen you know the, the life nothing uh, hits you more harder than the life but it's not like that, that you hit back to the life it is how you take it and move forward how you take it and walk and that's how you win you know that is the perfect example see i can see the goosebump you know many times life have rejected me but you should not stop fighting it there is something new if god has closed some door maybe you don't know you we feel very bad for it but he might have kept uh, uh, something which is a beautiful door for you that's what he doesn't want you to go to this door so hope for the best and uh, with your question i'm thinking don't you i think you you think a lot don't think just follow the follow the thing you know and study well i think you can do it no problem thank you and life is one you know you have to decide now because i i most of the students they ask me this thing sir how you have done this thing so i think in this your age wherever i go to the college most 90% of your agenda is not uh, what to become mana most of the things i have seen people they fall in love good girlfriend boyfriend their agenda becomes to get married so i think i think uh, this is one life uh, uh, i think if you like someone wait wait both of you till you achieve something good but just 
don't make a uh, habit of just doing something adjusting somewhere and and getting married and doing all this thing i think this is one life live large i think do something extraordinary then only you can you know like uh, today uh, i was so thrilled to sitting next to dr krishna ella and talking to him and see his growth you know padma bhushan so um, i thought maybe sometime even we can at least get padma shri small something you know do something you know think of that if you don't get it to forget but it doesn't see when you don't get don't get dejected but your job is to move on you you, are, you have got a wonderful life you have to just move on and nothing is possible after 50 i think on average those who are sitting here as 20 plus you have beautiful another 20 years there is a there is a proverb in gujarati chali chali means 40 once you are 40 there is always a loose puncture in your body your body starts deteriorating one point of time at your age i used to eat any damn thing and go to the farms and do 200 300 pos castnet but with 50 age even 10 minutes bending i'll get a cramp in my back so don't think that you have a life of 70 years or 80 years i think student life is 20 25 and after that you have a glorious uh, 25 years with you till you are 50 you can achieve so i think i just calculate in hours i i just calculate my things in minutes i don't spend time even i even i see mobile i see for something which is concrete for my study is my subject or my social media what people are responding what farmers are responding if i could have done that i could have not been on this stage right now talking to you and i i still wish i could have been young like you with this maturity and mindset so definitely i could have done, done i could have snatch stars from the <laughs> beautiful sky thank you thank you talking to you guys love you and i will be very happy to see both of us will be super happy to see maybe down 10 years that somebody like you has uh, become a unicorn in aquaculture especially all the best thank you sir thank you so for the session and also for the motiv for motivating the young students for being the young entrepreneurs and now i invite dr pramila from kerala university of fisheries and ocean studies to present dr manoj with a memento as a token of our gratitude and with that we come to the end of our session and i believe all of you had a positive takeaway and i also would like to take this opportunity to extend my warmest gratitude to both of our speakers dr u joginath jogi anand varma and dr manoj m sharma for imparting your knowledge and we also genuinely wish both of yours name for the next padma shri awards and the participants please note you are requested to assemble back at the same venue at sharp 2 o'clock a brief reminder on the afternoon session a discussion on the topic fostering knowledge economy and also making recommendations for submitting to governments will be done in the afternoon session right after that a common session on innovation and entrepreneurship is also arranged and so all the students are requested to disperse for lunch and the lunch will be served at the adjacent hall at 1:30 pm okay so uh, we are planning to take a group photo with the experts so requesting all to join here near the stage for taking a group picture and also a gentle reminder the students who are leaving now should uh, like assemble back at sharp 2 o'clock